I'd just love to pray. Father God, I just thank You for Your goodness. I just thank You that, Father, that I'm just standing here open and ready for You to speak through me, that it's not about me, but it's about You. And I give You the honour, the glory, and I thank You for Your goodness. I thank You for Your peace and Your grace, that Your Word would go out, that it would not return void, but that it would go out and would be planted in the hearts of Your people and that You would water and it cause it to flourish and grow. We just speak this in Your Name, Jesus. Amen. God is good, huh? We've been talking a bit about freedom and really had to take some time to sit sit down with God and really ask Him what, what that looks like for me. And it can be in various different ways, but God really spoke to me about gratitude and how freedom can come in gratitude. And in that, I was brought to the story in Luke 17, about the 10 lepers. Now just bear with me here, okay? So Luke 17, verses 11 to 19. Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him 10 men who were lepers who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And so it was, as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned with a loud voice, glorified God, fell down on his face at his feet, giving thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. How interesting is that, that at the beginning, you know, Jesus Jesus is travelling. He's travelling all the way to Jerusalem and he stops at a certain village. A certain village tells me that's sort of like one of those ones that's kind of a bit off to the side, not necessarily on the main road, but something drew Jesus there. He's travelling in the lead up to where it will be, his crucifixion. I just really want to break it down really, really technically, if that makes sense. He was travelling. Now, second thing is here, he mentions that the 10 men had leprosy. Now, leprosy is a skin disease that actually impacts many different things. It's now, nowadays, it's called Hansen's disease, which is an infection caused by slow-growing bacteria called mycobacteria, leprae. I apologise to any medical people if I got that wrong. It can affect the nerves, skin, eyes and lining of the nose. Now, in the culture of the day, they weren't sure if that was contagious. So the people that had leprosy were ostracised. They were kept to the side. They were kept at a distance and not brought in close because of fear that they might catch it, that if they sat next to somebody, that they might catch leprosy and get infected. So they stood at a distance being fearful, unclean. So unclean was the term that was always used for people that were either unwell or had issues or diseases. They were ostracised, they were kept aside. They were unclean and they had to announce that they were unclean. It wasn't that they could just be aside and away from people, but they actually had to let people know that if you came close to me, I'm unclean, you can't come near me. Keep a distance, keep a distance. It's not like nowadays where, you know, if you're not well, you might keep away or you might be around people, but it's not a, I'm unwell, don't come near me. But it's a a pushing back and a pulling back from society as a whole, not just as an individual. So they stood at a distance and they called out. They called out, Master, have mercy on me. Have mercy on us. They called out Master. They were aware of who Jesus was. So they weren't begging. They weren't begging and saying, Jesus, Jesus, please heal us. They were just saying, Master, have mercy on us. See us for who we are and uh, please heal us. Bring that healing. Allow us to step back into wholeness. Then Jesus told them to go to the priests. Now, I find it interesting here that Jesus doesn't say, be healed. He doesn't 
call them out and say, you have to stand here while I pray for you. He just says, be, he just says, go, go and take yourselves to the priests. Now the priests are key here because for somebody to be determined clean or unclean, they had to go to a priest for the priest to check them over fully. It wasn't just a, I'm going to have a shower and somebody's going to look at me from a distance. They actually had to check them over properly to see whether they were clean or unclean. So Jesus told them to go. They didn't beg. He told them to go. And as they went, as they went. So to go requires obedience and a doing. It's an acting out on our behalf. So as they went, they were healed. Their participation, as they went, they were healed. Healed and rendered ceremonially clean. Not just a little bit clean, but completely and in its entirety clean. Which meant that they didn't have to ostracise themselves from people, that they could walk in. I can only imagine that as they walked back into the village that people wouldn't recognise them because they were so far pulled back, because they were normally covered in disease that people wouldn't have recognised them, that they could walk in and go, wow, wow. Nobody's telling me I have to stand to the side. Nobody's walking a wide distance around me to make sure that they don't get close to me. They were clean in its entirety, not in part. Their physical body was completely clean. Out of the 10, one turned back. And it says in here, it says, on his way, he realised he was clean. He realised he was healed. Not when he got back to the village, not when he got to the priest, but along the way, he realised that his body had been made whole, that he was healed and that he was free from all the disease. In doing that, he came back to Jesus with a grateful heart. He came back to Jesus with gratitude and thankfulness that was not only skin deep, but that deep thankfulness that comes when you have gone through something and you're in such a hard place that when you come to the end of it, the gratefulness that just breaks through of, thank you, Jesus, that you carried me and that you led me and that you healed me. It also notes that the man who turned back was a Samaritan. Now, it doesn't say this in the beginning of it. It says it towards the end of it. Now, a Samaritan to the Jews was a foreigner, an enemy. They didn't get along well. There's quite big issues there. But it implies to me that the rest were Jews. But it was a foreigner that turned back and stepped into his healing. The nine were happy to just go along and just be part of society again. That was enough. It was enough for them to have their skin healed, to be able to fit in, to not be able to stand out, to not be able to be ostracised, but to actually be able to stand in and blend in. They were happy to be able to blend in to society. But what they missed out on was Jesus. They missed out on encountering and experiencing Jesus for themselves. Then we go into gratitude. Jesus tells the Samaritan, get up and go your way. Your faith has saved you. So the Samaritan, not only did he have a heart of faith to just be healed in the physical, he went further in wanting to be healed in its entirety to be able to lean into the Holy Spirit, to be able to lean into Jesus and say, I need more than just this. I need to be thankful. I need to be made whole. And it says here, in His gratitude, He was made whole. It says, you, your faith has made you well, made you whole. So the nine walked around in part. They received part healing. Their physical body was healed, but they weren't made well. They weren't made well in their heart. They weren't made well in their day-to-day. So it's an encouraging thing to go, 
We can be okay with our healing. We can be okay with the challenge, but are we willing to go that extra step and give thanks to God and say, thank you for you are the only true God. You are the one that saves and heals and leaning into that and drawing from that strength and that faith to be able to draw close to God and allow Him to grow in, to dig deeper and to bring out. Gratitude is the quality of being thankful. Readiness to show appreciation for and to return kindness. Gratitude just gives that another meaning to thankfulness. Thankfulness, it's like, yeah, thank you. But gratitude to me, it's that deeper. It's, it's reaching deeper to go, what, what am I truly grateful for? Yes, I'm thankful, but what am I truly grateful for? And sometimes it's hard to maintain gratefulness. It really is. Sometimes it takes digging, digging deeper in yourself. Sometimes it takes coming alongside somebody and saying, hey, I'm struggling just to be grateful. Can you help me? Can you help me be grateful? Because we're a family and we're not designed to do life alone. Gratitude is when you feel thankful for the good things in your life. This could be stuff people often take for granted, having a place to live, food, clean water, friends and family. Simple little things that we take for granted. Waking up in the morning, seeing that my children are awake and being grateful that they're not killing each other. Although I can hear the arguments, but the, the gratefulness in going, but they do love each other. Even though they're nitpicking and biting, they love each other. And leaning into that and being able to encourage them to not fight, but to be grateful for each other as well. My kids are cert- my younger kids are certainly learning that now their older brother's away. <laughs> the National Library of Medicine in the United States conducted an experiment evaluating anxiety across different age levels from 2008 to 2018 and found stratification. Now I had to look this word up because I had no idea what it meant. And it just talks about the gathering of data by age revealed the most notable increase of anxiety from just under 8% to just under 15% among respondents 18 to 25 years old. That's huge. That's like a doubling in anxiety, worry, concern, fear. In 2020 alone, Lockdowns, isolation and the withdrawal from people triggered a 25% increase in anxiety. 25% increase. That is huge. That is huge. And I'm very aware that there are people that are, that recharge when they're not around people, that there are people that recharge when they're with people. But even the people that like little contact with people struggled in isolation because we crave connection. We crave community. We crave being together. However, the most profound thing revealed in this study was that not only does gratitude lessen stress, but gratitude and anxiety cannot coexist in your brain at the same time. So if you are giving room for anxiety, you can't give room for gratitude. Therefore, possible solution when we feel anxious is what? Is gratitude. Intentionally, and sometimes it's very hard to shift out of that place. Sometimes it's really hard to shift out of that place. If there's a lot going on and you're just like, I've got so much to do, so much to do. You know what the Bible says? Do not worry about tomorrow. Because when you're worrying about tomorrow, you're robbing yourself of today. You're robbing yourself of tomorrow. If you're worried about this afternoon, you're robbing yourself of this moment now. It's the intentionality of going, no, I'm going to be grateful. I'm going to stop. And sometimes it starts small. You know, thank you, God, I woke up this morning. Thank you, God, for the trees. Thank you, God, little things. But the more you practice that, the more intentional you become about it and the more you realise, 
wow, I, I really am grateful and I really have a lot to be grateful for. Being grateful for people, telling people that you're grateful for them is huge. Sometimes people can be in a funk and sometimes you're not aware of it. But if you just go up and you say to somebody how much you love and appreciate them, all the things that they do for standing with you, for journeying with you, sometimes people just need to know that they're appreciated and that encourages them to then go, yeah, what am I grateful for? What am I grateful for? Call out the gratefulness in people. Call it out. I have an interesting thing I do with my children. More Zoe and Flynn. Liam's old enough now, he's not too bad. They can get in a funk themselves where they constantly argue and fight and backbite and just really frustrate each other. So I've gotten to a point where I will encourage them to stop and when they don't, I will remove them. If, they're, if we're at home, they go to their room. They need to take time to breathe. If we're in the car, same thing. They need to be quiet. They need to take time to breathe. And then I require for them to tell me three things they're grateful for. Three things they're grateful for because that helps to shift their mood. It helps to shift their attitude. It helps, helps them not to be cranky. You know, because when you're thankful, you can't be cranky. When you're thankful, it helps to lighten your mood. It helps to encourage you. It helps you to see the different things around you that aren't just there. But it's like, wow, this person's here today. Tracy's here today. You know, she's a great encourager. I'm so grateful for you. I really am grateful for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. But standing together like that, encouraging people, encouraging my children to be grateful. Three things. And they generally, if you're in the car, it starts out, I'm thankful for the trees. I'm thankful for that dog who belongs to somebody else. I'm thankful for the sun. It starts out this way, okay? But the more they do it, the more they realise. And I do have a rule with them that they can't repeat the same thing. So they have to be grateful for something else because, I mean, you could be doing this a few times over in a day. So it's reminding them, be grateful, you know? Are you grateful for your brother right there? Yes. Why are you grateful for him? And calling that out of them. Why are you grateful for your brother? Why are you grateful for them? What do you love about them? Because then as they hear each other speak like this, it encourages them and, in, in, and calls out gratefulness in them as well. So it's a good challenge for the big kids and the little kids. <laughs> it's good to be grateful when times are great. It's harder to be grateful when times are not. I wrote down a whole bunch of things I'm grateful for. I'm going to breathe my way through. <laughs> Some hit, still hit a bit hard. I'm grateful that I have an incredible mum who raised four kids on her own that would call up. She worked an hour away from where we lived. She would call up in daylight savings time and say, be ready when I get home and beep the horn. She would beep the horn. We'd pile in the car in our swimmers. We'd have hers there and we'd drive 20 minutes down to Ostomir Beach in Wollongong. And we'd spend the rest of the daylight swimming, having fun and have... What do they call them? Chip buddies? Chip sandwiches for dinner. All because she worked so hard and she just wanted to squeeze out every bit of time with us that she could. I'm forever grateful for that. I'm grateful. <sighs> that at 16... I got to meet my dad. I'm grateful that he's sitting on the front row this morning. And that my children have an opportunity to know their pop, who they have been absolutely smothering in love and affection for the last three weeks. I'm very grateful. I'm very... I'm grateful that while in Cambodia, 
while enduring two extremely painful miscarriages, my Cambodian family came around me. They didn't allow me to stand alone. They came around, supported me, supported Chris and loved us through the journey. Even in the difficulty and the hardness and the pain, they didn't shy away. They drew in and came close. Sorry for everyone, I'm making cry. (laughs) I'm grateful that we received the best medical care. Thank you so much, beautiful. Hugs are my love language, if you hadn't noticed. I'm grateful that while we were in Cambodia and we had issues with Liam's kidneys, that we were able to fly to Thailand and receive the best medical care for him and continued medical care through PCH since we've been back. For God's goodness, that even in the lockdowns, I was able to get in and have surgery myself to remove a tumour on my thyroid and part of my thyroid. And that that the doctor, after he pulled it out and we went and saw him, said that if it had been left any longer, we would have been in trouble. That God's goodness in fast-tracking the process, even in the chaos. For the incredible doctors and nurses at PCH, who cared for my beautiful Zoe after she contracted a form of tuberculosis in her face, which saw it swell up. And they literally had to peel her face open. She has minimal scarring and she is still so incredibly beautiful today. Thus, we call her our pretty. I'm so incredibly, incredibly grateful. And sometimes it hurts to remember things, but these tears are a little bit painful, but mostly joy and thankfulness and gratitude to God that He doesn't leave us aside or alone, but that He leads us and He carries us, but we can choose to be grateful. We can choose to lean in and not live in fear or anxiousness. I'd love to just invite the worship team up. In Philippians 4, verse 6 to 7, it it talks about a reality that we can live, a reality that we can experience and be a part of. It says, do not worry about anything. Instead, pray. Pray about everything. Tell God what you need. Tell Him what you need. Ask Him for help if you need help. And thank Him, thank Him for all He has done. Gratitude is that positioning of saying, this is what I need, but I'm so thankful for what you've done already, for what you're going to do and for who I am in you. Then you will experience, thank Him for all He's done, then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can possibly understand. In the darkest of places, in the hardest of times, we can have peace and we can have joy in the knowing that God is with us, He carries us and He leads us. His peace will guard your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. The nine were content with what they received. The one wanted more. He wanted to be whole. He went back and was made whole. He was made well in its entirety. Unless gratitude is a part of who we are, we can't be whole. We can't be whole because we spend our time leaning into fear and anxiety and worry and concern. And that takes away, it doesn't add to. Grace opens Gratefulness opens a way for peace to flow in and be a part of who we are. (sighs) 
Thank you, Father. I just want to encourage you this morning. If you're in that place of feeling anxious, always worried, if you struggle to take hold of gratefulness, you just need to lean into Jesus. You just need to lean into Jesus because He's the only one that can give you true freedom. He's the only one that can give you true gratefulness at the depths that just reach the bottom of your soul. Don't be afraid to go there. Don't be afraid to cry. Sad tears, happy tears, all the tears. Because as you lean in, He restores. As you lean in, He heals. As you lean in, He gives hope. As you lean in, He gives joy. And joy isn't, oh, everything's happy. It's joy in knowing that you don't stand alone. Joy in knowing that when you are physically alone, that God is with you, that He is with you, that He's there ready, willing and able at all times to draw in closer to you.